Hello guys, how are you doing? I'm Mohamed Sadri. Uh, the title of this video is FPGA or let's say PL reconfiguration and remote firmware update for Zinc and Zinc Ultra Scale Plus under Peta Linux. Um, this, these are a series of videos I have decided to create to show how in your Zinc Ultra Scale platform when you are running Peta Linux you can reconfigure the PL. Okay, and how you can reflash the QSPI from within Peta Linux and how and also this is this is a minor topic but how you can receive um, these images over the network so basically the story is you have your board for example the T104 you have a SD card or any type of storage and you have several configurations available for your PL and every time you want one of these to be effective so you want to be able to reconfigure your PL every time using one of these different, let's say, beta streams. We are go going through the process how each of these images should be prepared and how the um, PL reconfiguration can happen uh, when we are running Peta Linux. So I have uh, three designs three different PL designs in, in this in these videos and I'm using them. PL design one and two basically contain an XI DMA and then a simple XI stream logic which receives um, the stream of data, performs a simple mass over this stream of data and then writes back the data to the DMA and the DMA writes back the data to the DRAM. And then we have um, Peta Linux running on the CPU. So we have a complete design, hardware, software, kernel level drivers, everything. A complete design, a complete working design. And then the difference between PL Design 1 and PL Design 2 is basically the simple mass which is being happening here. In PL Design 1, the stream of data when it comes, this, the, the result is basically the inputs multiplied by 2. And in PL design two, the result is the incoming sample to the power of two. Okay, so this is the difference. And then I will have two images, one image for PL design one, one image for PL design two. In both of the images, we have a similar set of IPs, but only the functionality of the simple mass changes. So essentially, from the perspective of Linux running here, the device tree remains the same. There is no new module added, no new mo no no module removed. Everything is the same. Um, the device tree does not change. The drivers here they don't change. And then we have a third PL design, which contains an additional IP. And this IP is a simple, very simple XI memory mapped IP. And basically what it does, it always returns the summation of the first uh, two XI slave registers uh, on the next register. Okay, so the base, basically the CPU can write to the first register, second register in the memory map of this IP. And then when it reads the next register, that register is the summation of the first two. For PL design three, I have a new IP added to the to my PL. From the perspective of Linux running here, the device tree has changed. The device tree is not similar than before. Basically, when you reprogram the PL, the device tree should be sweeped again. There is a new driver that should be added. And and this is um, one of the uh, topics that we cover. Basically, we need to. Um, to use um, device tree overlays a new driver should be loaded the device tree should be um, analyzed again then the next co uh, topic that we cover and maybe that's not really important but can be interesting is sometimes your PL configuration is not residing on your local storage but is gonna come over the network so there's a, there's a server somewhere and your your board your zinc ultra scale plus board is supposed to through network connect to that server to check if there's a new firmware and to read that firmware and then to program 
the PL using that firmware. Or if if you are bringing up your system from a QSPI flash, then maybe you want to have a script that basically over the network checks for availability of new QSPI images, QSPI flash images, and then if such an image is available, you want the script to get the image and then to reflash the QSPI automatically while your board is running. So this is another topic we are gonna cover. And it contains basically two parts. We want to have all of our communication through SSH. So um, communication over the network, it should be a um, secure communication. So this guy will be a SSH server and we will be a SSH client and um, we should be able to connect to the server through SSH and grab our images. Next one is booting Peta Linux from QSPI flash. Okay, and then reflashing the QSPI while the Peta Linux is running. So we will also cover these topics. Yeah, so this was the introductory video. Let's get started with the main videos.